You're watching once again a YouTube video presentation of the University of Wyoming Center on Aging. I'm Scott Veach. I'm your host. And on this program, we'll be discussing topics of interest for caregivers of loved ones with dementia. We hope that you will subscribe to the channel and you'll hit that thumbs up like button. Both of those actions help the channel to grow and allow us to reach more people. And if you'll tap that notification bell, you'll be alerted each time we upload a new program. And now, this is Once Again. Our guest today is Carol Taylor. She is a licensed clinical social worker from Jackson, Wyoming. She is also part of the support staff of Wyoming Dementia Together. She's been a guest on this program before. And of course, uh, we're good buddies. What can I say? Carol, thanks so much. Good to see you again, even though we see each other regularly. <laughs> you bet. Um, back on November or uh, February 14th, you and I did a, a program for Wyoming Dementia Together. And we talked about um, the value of remembrance of our loved ones and not just if they've passed, but also remembering the good times for the caregivers uh, if they're still in that uh, caregiver journey. And so that's that's what we're gonna be talking about today. And I, I think that um, just to give a little background, in your work, I know that you do a lot of work with caregivers, right? Exactly, yeah, I work pretty exclusively with uh, care partners, and then certainly the beloved with dementia. But yeah, a lot of support and understanding and education, if you will, with uh, care partners. Yeah. Yeah. You use the phrase uh, care partners. And I said caregivers. Is there a difference? I mean, is one more? There is to me, but I'll tell you why. It's because I am, uh, I'm so immersed in this uh, tract in my life. Yeah. Um, I like care partners because it sounds a little bit more like a level playing field. We're in this together. We're walking side by side. The care partner is doing the lion's share of the work, but I think it's another way we can remember to empower our loved one. That That's my personal take. And I think too that um, we have talked many, many times on uh, on our programs with Wyoming Dementia Together. We've talked many times about the importance of building a care team. And so I think maybe Care Partners kind of fits in with that pretty well. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, probably where I live, you know, there's a lot of very wealthy people and they hire folks to be their caretakers, meaning their vacuous homes and property. <laughs> so yeah. I I stick with I stick with care companion. We're in it together. Right. Yeah. Little little background for uh for the audience also is that you and I have both served in that role. I cared for my wife Mona, who had Alzheimer's, and she fought it for about 15 years before she passed about two and a half years ago. You were a care uh, partner for your husband Bob, too. Uh, I was indeed. Bob uh yeah, we uh, we were married for 32 years, and he passed in uh, 2019. And uh, he his mind was very clear, but his dear body wore out. He had a couple falls and fractured hips, and recovered from them. And uh, he he was he's 30 years my senior, so he uh, he was 95. We used to say 95 going on 96. He was 95 when he passed, and it was a very good, gentle death. And I think he was just finished. He was done. There we go. So the yeah. first thing that that we want to want to address today, since both of us have had experience as care partners is to speak to the care partners in our audience yes. and to let them know that uh, they're doing a, a great job. And I think they don't often hear that. Right, exactly. So uh, we're, we're sending everyone a standing ovation. Uh, you're definitely on the podium. You're going for the gold. And uh also, as, as Scott would say, you all deserve $10 million and to eat your favorite food every single day. Mm -hmm. And 
So if we could wish that, we would make that happen. Certainly would, yeah. And and I think too that one of the aspects of that of being a care partner is that, boy, you're really doing better than what you think you are, right? Yeah. Isn't that pretty common? You see that in your practice. I see that a lot in my practice. And what can happen is it's not a criticism or a judgment, but when we are so myopically focused on our beloved that needs us 24 seven or 36 hours a day, uh, I think we can lose sight of sort of what's around us. And it's why I really encourage our care partners to come up with five or six things they can do in under two minutes to help bring themselves back into their own bodies. And I mean, it's easy to walk out on your front porch. Well, I can't, my doors are jammed with snow, <laughs> but to walk out on your front porch, take a deep, deep, good breath and realize there's a bigger world out there. And also we tend to isolate because we just don't have any, energy left after caring for a loved one all day long. So the last thing we want to do maybe is go out and socialize. So all of those things add to just kind of holding it inside. And I think it's impossible that we can be objective about ourselves. So in our subjectivity, we can be somewhat critical or say I could have, should have, would have. Right, right. You use the phrase myop myopically focused. And boy, that really rung a bell with me and really hit home. And I think that uh, that's a terrific way of putting it because it's like we get tunnel vision. We are so focused exactly. on the job at hand because they require our attention, like you said, 24 seven. You mentioned a few things that people can do can to kind of become centered again and bring it back home, such as right. Such as uh, literally going outside. Uh, I mean, and I don't mean take a 20 minute walk. I'm saying in two minutes or less. So go outside, look around. I don't care if it's freezing cold, look around, take good, clean, clear, deep breaths. And it's a tiny little recharge for us. Doesn't last long, but it's enough to maybe get us going for the next stretch. The other thing that we can definitely do is to practice therapeutic breathing, therapeutic breath work. And there's information on that on our website, our Wyoming Dementia Together website. But it's intentional breathing with the focus on counting your in-breath through your nose and counting your out breath through your mouth. And when you're counting your breaths, you're breathing and holding, you really can't think about other stuff. You got to focus on that. Mm -hmm. That's part of the magic of it. And, uh, you know, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm kind of hooked on oxygen. I think it's my <laughs> right. favorite gas. And so, yeah. <laughs> well, next to helium, but that's another time. Uh, so it, it helps to energize our bodies, our minds, and it drops our shoulders. We may not even recognize that, but it definitely infuses us with the energy that we need to continue. You know, the other I, thing is possibly sit down, uh, oh, put put a favorite dance song on the uh, on your CD player or whatever we have these days, and dance for two minutes. And in the house by yourself, you can sing along too. Something that just interrupts what's happening right now. And people will say, "Well, I can't go outside because I can't leave him for very long." I bet you could leave him for one to two minutes. Mm -hmm. Leave the door open if you need to keep an eye on him, but it, it, try something. And then obviously respite time and time for yourself and time to socialize with people that you love and you know and care about you. Support groups are fabulous. Uh, many, many different avenues to to help feed us as the care partner. You know what I used to do? I remember that there were times uh, before Mona went into the nursing home when sometimes I would find myself at one or two o'clock in the morning and I would realize that I had to get up again in another five hours or so to start the day. Right. But that alone time, that peaceful time of just being there and knowing that she was asleep and that I didn't have to think about anything. I knew it was a trade-off. I knew I'd be 
little sleepy, maybe tired the next day, but I felt it was more worth it. It was more worthwhile to have that peaceful alone time than it was to have the, the shortness of sleep, even if it was one or two o'clock in the morning. I hear you loud and clear, yeah. you know, and it's not unlike what our dear uh, pastor said at our last session about the power of silence, the essential nature of silence. And boy, oh boy, uh, that cannot be overstated, even if it's 20 minutes where all the sound is turned off. But it almost does have to happen at one or two in the morning, I think. Right. And I remember, too, sometimes the respite care was available to me for a couple of hours at a time. And I did nothing. I went and got a coffee and sat in the exactly. Target parking lot for two yep. hours just yep. to exactly. decompress. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Exactly yeah. right. I have I talked to a woman last week, a new client, and she's over in the Casper area. But she tells me what she does when she has a couple hours of respite from an agency that's supporting them at home is that she goes through the coffee drive through and then sits in the Walmart parking lot on the outside, on the fringes of it. And uh, that's her spot. And I said, that's great. That works. And she said, it does. It sounds strange to people, but I really love it. I bring my Kindle. My car's nice and warm. I have my coffee. It's great. Yeah. I, I, I have a friend, too, who uh, who lives near a, a, a large airport. And um, and he says that at those times for him, what he does, go gets a coffee and he, he pulls up close to the uh, as close as he can to the runway and he watches planes take off and land for a couple of hours. Beautiful. Same thing. Beautiful. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. But we can find a little a little something. Sometimes I think we're just too exhausted to get Ooh. creative about this. And now yeah. the time that we can catch our breath is the time that you should write these things down on a card. And I mean, literally write them down. Mm -hmm. I've done that for years because when I'm in the midst of it, I can't remember what helps me. So we've talked about the fact that care partners are doing a much better job than what they think. Uh, certainly, we want to encourage them to uh, to stay the course. We have talked a little bit about our partners, your husband, Bob, and my wife, Mona. And we are going to do that in our next episode that's going to be coming up. It'll be posted here in a couple of weeks. We've actually uh, made this a two-parter. So we're, we're going to wrap up part one here and then come back yeah. with part two in a minute. My guest is uh, Carol Taylor. She is a licensed clinical social worker from Jackson, Wyoming. She and I are members of the Wyoming Dementia Together support team. And uh, you're watching once again. So we thank you for being with us this time. And we invite you to stay tuned for part two that'll be coming up. Thanks so much, everyone. You've been watching once again, a YouTube video presentation of the University of Wyoming Center on Aging. We hope if you haven't done so already that you'll subscribe to the channel and hit that thumbs up like button. Both of those actions help the channel to grow and allow us to reach more people. And if you'll tap that notification bell, you'll be alerted each time we upload a new video. Thanks so much for being with us. I'm Scott Veach. We'll see you again next time.